A 10-year-old male with a penetrating... Why is your hand inside him? Because he was bleeding a lot. Take it out of him. You look 12. Can you find a grown-up to tell me that? Do not move your hand. See that? Grown-ups. Nobody move. Can you feel a pulse? Yeah. What do you think she got in her hand, Schmidt? Uh, His abdominal aorta. Yep. Don't take your hand out. What's your name? Herrera. Andy Herrera. Okay, Herrera, we got to get him up to the OR, and I'm sure you're very clear about this, but you cannot move your hand. Can you hold pressure? So, what was that phone call about? I could use a distraction, take my mind off the fact that I can't feel my arm anymore, and I'm one fingertip away from this kid dying. Oh, there's this medical innovation contest, and uh, my project is, picture you have a fire hose that isn't working, right? Okay. Except my fire hose is a liver. Okay, so my idea is I want to replace it with a sprinkler system. Except my sprinkler system is mini livers all throughout the body. Sounds like science fiction. Because it kind of is. So I need a polymer. And there's this old guy in Madrid who has the patent. All right. We're turning him around. Uh, okay, so why didn't you take his phone call? Because Kepner is heading up the contest, and I don't want her to know that I don't have the patent. So you're kind of screwed? Yep, kind of. Ease him on in. Slow. A little, a little bumpy here. Here you go. Easy. Easy. Okay. Easy. Rookies, huh? Oh, yeah. Hurry over. Take this clamp. Me? No, no, no. This isn't even my dominant hand. You run into fires. You can do this. Well, because my dad's a fire chief. And he taught me how to run a hose when I was seven. I spent my seventh birthday up in that gallery watching my mother do this. I will walk you through this. Take the clamp. OK, open and close it for me. OK, good. I'm going to support your free hand. Now you're going to slide it in and clamp just above your fingers. You got it? Mm-hmm. What if I miss? I would prefer it if you didn't. Okay, is it above your fingers? I think I think so, yes. Okay. So now, can you feel it pulsating? There, I feel it. I, I clamped it. I think. Okay. You can take your hand out. Come here, take your hand out. You told me that if I took my hand away, he'd bleed out in seconds. Yeah, that was before you clamped it. Yeah, I don't know if I clamped it. I'm not a doctor. Will you just trust me? Let go of the clamp. Here we go. <sighs> clamp, need some suction. Great, Bobby. <laughs> you did it, Herrera. He's still alive. Let's hang two more units. Herrera. You did so great in there today. If you ever consider a new line of work, we could really use you around here. I thought Hellmouth might want a phone back. Thank you for trying. I didn't just try. Dr. Cerrone is going to be in the States next week and has agreed to come hear your pitch. What? You're kidding. What what did you say? I just said they're standing between the hose and the flames right now (laughs) by holding on to that patent. (laughs) And I should know. I was literally holding on to something today that I couldn't let go of either, but... And then the time came to step away and let you take over. And if there's anyone he can trust to take over, it's you. Thank you. Also, I tried to explain the whole sprinkler thing, but I don't think it translated. Yeah, it really just sounded like you were screaming at him. Ah, romance languages are passionate. We don't have to hug now, do we? No, not really a hug. Oh, God, no. Okay, good. I had a good time today. It was nice to meet you, Dr. Gray. You too. I've got to go find my rookie. Okay. All right. Good night. See ya. Herrera. Hi. I heard your dad was down here. I just wanted to check in. Bailey's taking him up for an next lap, and I thought I would join. You okay? Let's go.
<laughs> okay, that's enough. Put your game face on. We got your dad, and now you go be brave for them, okay? Oh, oh, that kind of meeting. Oh, let's not. Please, let's yeah. do. I hate people. Oh, thank God. So how did it go? Horribly. I liked him a lot. We found each other delightful. And I thought, hey, could it really be this easy? How is that horrible? Because then he said the one thing, that he hates kids and that he finds single mothers desperate. Right. OK, next time. Right, I don't think there'll be a next time. Don't, don't give up. For what it's worth, it, it sounds like a great date. I mean, if he hadn't said that thing, you might have given it a go. And then he would have probably tried to hide his feelings. And the truth might not come out for months or years. So when I mean, you found out there are good men out there and you dodged a very slow moving bullet, I'd call that a good use of your time. Thanks, Herrera. Oh, my goodness, Herrera. Hell, are you okay? I'm, I'm, my husband's in surgery. I can get an update for you. My dad died. He, he just died. I had heard that. I'm, I'm so sorry. I know the two of you were close. I thought we were. Nothing makes sense anymore. And, you know, every, everyone thinks it's the grief talking, and maybe it is, but I, I can't shake the feeling that maybe something really awful happened. With your dad? With my mom. Oh, God, I'm sorry. You don't even. No, no, listen, it's okay. I, I have plenty of stuff in my own life. I could use a break. You can talk. I thought my parents were happy. But I, I keep getting these flashes of them fighting, screaming, my mom crying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, it's okay. You know, the one favorite memory I have of my mother, the one I, I've kept with me all these years was our last fun day together. And I've always held on to that as an example of how much she loved me, how much I lost. But now, now I think maybe she knew it was our last day together. And now I think maybe she killed herself. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> We had this big extended family, and, and when my mom died, everyone just disappeared, like we were lepers. And I didn't, I didn't even remember them, I didn't think about them. I, it was, it's like I blocked them out or something until my dad died. And, you know, I started going through his stuff, and then I talked to my dad's friend, and he was cagey, and ugh, I don't, I'm, I'm probably being paranoid. Or you're just remembering stuff that you tried very hard to forget. And the brain is an amazing machine. If there's an event or a loss that's too traumatic, it has a way of walling itself off so you can survive the trauma. And then here come the memories. They come back in fragments and little puzzle pieces that then you have to put together. And when that happens, that hurts. And I'm not talking about just emotionally. The body remembers the event. The brain remembers the trauma. And that... That's a whole body ache. Thank you. Thank you for... <sighs> the people who love me keep telling me I sound crazy. Oh, Herrera, you know what? For what it's worth, you don't sound crazy. And sometimes a breakthrough can look an awful lot like a breakdown. 